we all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have- and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. And without further ado, I'd like to uh, open this segment up to Erica Wallace from Wallace Consulting Group. Erica, are you there? Yes. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? What's happening? Um, great, thanks. Uh, we have sort of an update and a new app at the same time this week. Oh, good. We're looking at an app that we talked about probably almost a year ago uh, called Card Munch. It's actually being discontinued on July 11th. It, it allowed you to scan business cards very quickly on the go and will connect with the user's LinkedIn account. And what they've done instead is LinkedIn has now partnered with Evernote to have the Evernote business card uh, camera within the app on Evernote that will scan and sync with your LinkedIn account. All right, just so the listeners uh, gain an appreciation of this particular app. So you would normally take a picture of a business card mm-hmm. and then uh, within a, a certain time frame that the information on the business card would be made available to you as part of your sort of Outlook contact, so on and so forth, correct? Yes, and it would also sync with anything in LinkedIn. So any additional contact information you didn't have, it would pick that up and, and keep all of the information in one place. Got it. And that service is essentially going to be obsolete. It's going to be gone. It is. It's going to be gone on July 11th. In early May, they partnered with Evernote. So they are keeping up a website for any of the listeners who did use Card Munch. If you go to evernote.com forward slash Card Munch, they're going to allow all of the cards that you did scan to be moved over seamlessly in one click. So if you are if you were using it, don't worry. Um, you can move all the information over. And then Evernote has a lot more than just the business card scanner within it, but it really allows everything to be in one central location. So if you're at a meeting or a conference and you're networking with people, you can also keep all the notes from that conference, all the um, scans, any documents you upload, all in one place. So it puts your business cards in a bit more context. When you get home, you're not looking through just a list of names. You're actually seeing how you met them from the handshake. Awesome. Awesome. Erica, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. See you next week. See ya. People you see on the street, right. you know, the people who you see the, get the image of homelessness in, that's only 10% of the population. 90% of the homeless population, they're in shelters, they're in motels, they're competent, they're cognizant, they're articulate, and they're trying to get back on their feet. Mm-hmm. And that's where the prevention program comes in. And let's talk about that, because tell us how much um, it costs you to keep people out of homelessness, and tell us how much it costs the state once they are homeless. Forget the moral cost of uprooting children and uprooting a person and putting them in a motel or a shelter. It would cost taxpayers on average $30,000. Wow. So, <laughs> forget maddening. If, well, exactly. So what I tell people is picture a shelter, picture a lot of people in there. Our housing search program gets people out of there. Our stabilization services make sure they stay out of there. And then our prevention program makes sure they don't go through the front door ever. Uh, the VA loan is a, um, a great mortgage program that's available for all veterans, anyone that has had um, service in the military um, based off of certain criteria. It's a no money down program, which is what we love about it. Um, it can get a lot of people into homes that might not be able to um, put aside the down payment and um, also a no PMI program and at an extremely competitive interest rate. Oh, very good. I'll, I'll throw a curveball question at you. Uh, Um, (laughs) uh, Uh, It is baseball season, so I guess you can, okay. (laughs) There you go. Um, Now, of course, in order for uh, someone to be be able to qualify for a VA loan, they have to be a veteran, correct? So husband and wife, uh, the husband is the veteran, uh, they purchase a property, he qualifies for the VA loan, they buy the property, and uh, the property is owned by, uh, the title is owned in in both of their names. Mm -hmm. Husband passes away a couple of years later. And so the individual that qualified for the loan is no longer alive. Uh, Would the VA allow that loan to continue? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, For two reasons. Number one, um, I mean, obviously, how would they, they would have to first of all know that he passed away. Mm -hmm. But but the VA has a program for widow's benefits. All widows are entitled to the VA. Like, even... 
let's go back and use an example where um, a widowed, you know, someone who's a widow of a veteran wants to purchase a property that they oh. don't already own. That person can use the VA. That's the only person that can use the VA benefit that isn't the veteran. But, so that goes to the what you know to the surviving spouse. The VA oh, okay. will only allow. Yeah, the VA will only allow the program for the um, veteran and a spouse not a boyfriend, girlfriend, not a fiancé. They have to be married. And the reason behind that is because it is such a great loan program and they want their veterans to be the ones to be able to take advantage of it, not somebody else to be able to use the program without the veteran being the one to I want to know the statistic how many shotgun weddings went down <laughs> because <laughs> because they just needed to be married um, because it is a great program. I'll be, I'll be honest. I've had a few that have uh, just quickly gone to the justice of the peace and then had the, <laughs> had the formal wedding afterwards, but we didn't tell anybody. <laughs> So I'm involved in, in uh, purchasing a property. I want to be able to manage my finances properly. I would like to be able to transfer money from one uh, particular bank account to another bank account just to be able to make it all manageable so I can pay everything out through that one account. Should I be transferring balances from one account to this another? This is probably, if I, can, if I can think about the most frustrating part of the mortgage process for the consumer is assets and bank statements and verifying all of this stuff. So uh, again, have that dialogue with your loan officer um, as you're getting ready to buy a property. Because keep in mind, typically, any large deposit over $1,000 that's non-payroll, the underwriter wants to know what that's all about. People say, it's none of your business. Well, it is because you're applying for a mortgage. They hmm. want to make sure that the money you're receiving is, you know, through the course of you know your your life, and not money from a friend, uh, you know, uh, into your account to make sure. your file look better.